Hey guys, I'm back for another video and welcome to Hypixel Skyblock for another tutorial. And today I'm going to show you guys how not to get scammed. Before the video starts, I'd like to show you guys my awesome new cloak. Look at this thing. It's 30 virus hacked. It leaks code all over the place. It looks freaking neat and it's available now on my Badline store. Link in the pinned comment and description. It helped me out a lot and uh, it just looks really neat. I mean, if you're using Badline client, then i mean this is the obvious choice anyways let's get out with the video so before we get to anything specific i think it would be worth talking about the general tips for how not to get scammed in skyblock so typically as with real life skipping progression or cheating the system is going to get you burned playing as intended and not trying to cheat the system will keep you away from most scams if you're doing something that can be seen as cheatsy expect to encounter scammers this is a phrase again from real life too good to be true is a phrase that comes to mind here i mean of course <laughs> if you try to cheat the system and skip progression or just do something you're not supposed to be doing then there's a good chance that other people that are trying to cheat the system are going to get you so i guess some general tips would be to just avoid manual trades whenever you can if you can grind for something or get something without the help of someone else i would suggest doing it that way the first thing that comes to mind is mathematical hose and baskets of seeds if you want a tutorial on how to do farming properly without anyone's help you can click the card in the top right hand corner for my jacobs festival tutorial but uh, another one would be Essence. That one, I think, is an acceptable risk because I personally, as someone that doesn't play a lot of dungeons, would like to five-star a bunch of gear. But uh, again, if you have to do these kind of trades, there are things you could do, precautions you can have that will make things a little less risky for you. So some other general tips. Avoid manual trading whenever you can. If you can buy something off of the auction house or the bazaar, do that. Uh, you'll see people in the lobby begging, oh, I have... Uh, cheapest bin or below cheapest bin no use the auction house or the bazaar whenever absolutely like unless absolutely necessary do a manual like you only do a manual trade if it's a few things that you can't do with the auction house and bazaar some other obvious ones never loan people items if someone says that they're doing like an auction oh technoblade versus dream on my ah like no basically anyone advertising in a lobby just don't listen to them you know just walk by without you know acknowledging them because you know th that's where all the scams come from is these beggars in the lobby another one actually this is a general tip that should help you all across the board and that's to have a item value mod installed i've been told that in forge it's neu not enough updates and if you're using badline client the feature's coming soon but basically it's like that thing that shows you the value of items like the lowest bin on the ah this could help prevent a lot of swapping scams which i'll talk about later it'll show you the true value of the item you're looking at which could be very helpful and another thing that you could do is go onto resource packs there's first sky reborn is a pack that i've been told is very popular and once you install it, it uses Optifine to give custom textures to a lot of Skyblock items. So now the aspect of the end looks different from a Vorpal Katana, which doesn't actually have a texture. But like, for example, we all know that an aspect of the end is a diamond sword. And then if you go in here and look up, I don't know, aspect of the dragon, it looks different from an aspect of the end, even though in Minecraft, they're the same item. So having a pack like this installed, even if you don't like the pack, just having it installed when doing your trade is a really good idea in my opinion because again it'll prevent swapping scams a common one is let's say you want someone to uh, star your livid dagger right what people do is they swap the livid dagger for a dreadlord sword which looks very dark here but then if i look up livid dagger see it's like more sharp you know so they they look different which is helpful so the first category of scam that i'm going to talk about today is the easily avoidable scams some examples are when you're exploring the auction house make sure to double check for whether or not the item is what you think it is a very common thing that i see is if i were to look up for example handle right let's say someone's looking for a necron's handle right necron's handle highest bin is 430 mil but you might have noticed when i was down here there's bejeweled handles that are recommed so yeah look at this oh they're actually everywhere 
Bejeweled handle, buy it now, 400 million coins recombobulated. Looks very, very similar to Necron's handle. Again, if you have the pack on that makes things look different, this won't be the case. But in vanilla textures or any texture pack that's not Skyblock specific, that's very, very risky. A way to avoid this would just be very specific. Necron's handle. It's more annoying to type, but you're not going to get the scammers. Another very common one is with enchantment books. So if I were to look up ultimate wise, you might realize if I go to lowest bin, you'll see a lot of ultimate wise. Let's go a bit forward to the point where we see ultimate wise fives. As you can see, there's ultimate wise one cubism five. Now, <laughs> this is another common way people try to scam is by having a book look like it's in the price range of all the other books that are actually ultimate wise five maybe a little bit lower but there's another extra enchantment there so be very very careful to just look at, look for what you're buying you know don't make assumptions make sure what you're buying is what you want instead of some other thing i've already talked about this as well beggars public lobby advertisers just use the auction house of bazaar these people are trying to scam like how do they benefit if they sell you an item that's lower than the lowest bin right how do they benefit from that there is no way to benefit from that unless they're scamming you so just don't listen if you if you go to like lobby one i guarantee you dude there's gonna, there's gonna be so many people that are like oh buy this from my ah lower than lowest bin well that i guess that's something people do but it's not really a scam but like direct trading with someone for lowest bin no 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 don't do that don't open yourself up to the trade menu unless you absolutely have to another common one is i'm quitting bid on my ah to get everything in my co-op there's no way to guarantee that they're going to follow up on that because they'll just they could just take the coins and run you know another thing with scams is that you have to make sure that there's no time during the transaction when one person's giving another person an item and then a second action has to be had to provide the other item that's the most risky scam there is because then you have to wait for the other person to come back and do the second transaction which if you're trying to scam they could just not do it if you have to do trades make sure there's only one transaction happening and that you can't be left hanging if someone doesn't follow up on the second part of the trade oh here's another common one is people that will offer to build farms for you on your island never co-op add someone you don't know there's many reasons why people would want to be co-op added for your island there's many reasons why you might think you want them on your island again building farms is a big one maybe you need I don't know, maybe someone just wants to be a part of your co-op because they say they can do a lot of grinding and help you out. No, do not add someone you don't know to your co-op. They can take everything from your chests and sell it on the AH, take all of your coins that you have stored in the bank and then trade them to someone else. Just don't do it. Just don't add someone you don't know to your co-op. It's dumb. Another common one is people that do giveaways on discords. Don't trust them. Don't accept party invites from people you don't know don't join discords from people that invited you that you don't know because even if you win this quote giveaway those coins are most likely duped and then you'll get banned so it's not really a scam it's just people being rude i don't i don't know <laughs> and just don't trust a discord that you don't know or people that you don't know to give you coins you don't know where those coins came from you could get banned and flagged by the system so next up we're going to talk about the moderate risk scams this includes item swapping in the trade menu this can apply anywhere really for example i have kyle here right he's got a dreadlord sword let's say for example that yeah look at this livid dagger looks exactly the same so if i were to put coins in the trade menu i don't know one mil ooh, one mil livid dagger oh boy and then i go to like click on the confirm button and then before i do that he does this swaps it out for a dreadlord sword again this could easily be prevented if you have the resource pack enabled and the mod that shows the value of the item at the bottom of the description that would make it very easy to avoid getting scammed this way all it takes is for me to pay to click this button to pay one mil for a dreadlord sword nah, 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 nah. again like i said don't try to cheat the system if someone offers you one mil for a livid dagger they're gonna try doing this <laughs> it's it's obvious some people also make what are called ghost items there's multiple kinds of ghost items the first type is through various bugs they're able to grab an item from like this menu like for example see all these icons they could take these items somehow i don't know how they do it but people are able to do it they grab the item and then put it there. And then sometimes they're able to grab item display items. Like for example, 
you could get the item that says gifts buy price sell price and it's not a gift you can't use it as a gift but it's an item that looks exactly the same so be careful people will try and swap that again that's why the value mod is so good because it shows lowest bin there is no lowest bin for a display item so it won't show up oh another common one is when you're trading in coins a gold nugget comes up in the display people can replace it with a gold nugget instead of actual coins people are ridiculous man you have to be out looking for these things if you're doing manual trades again why are you exchanging coins in a trade menu unless you're doing uh, some essence or something but like just use the auction house or bazaar like trust me just, unless you absolutely there's a we're about to get to the reasons why you would have to uh the other big one is collateral scams so basically what collateral means is let's say you don't trust somebody with a trade but in order to force them into complying with what you want you can have them give you an item of equal value to the value you want to get from them and that sounds complicated but it's really simple let's say that i bought let's say right now right i go to the auction house i buy the lowest livid dagger it's clean it's got nothing on it it's basically seven mil and then i hand it to a friend and a, or a friend or someone in a lobby that i don't know and then i'm like okay i want you to five star this livid dagger so then you would take however much essence it is to five star the dagger i think it's four thousand per wither essence or something like that do the math however many coins right that's how much you need to pay them but not right away you have them give you seven million coins as collateral for your livid dagger so you trade them the livid dagger they give you seven mil and then they go off and add the stars to the livid dagger and they come back and then what they should do is they should give you the livid dagger and you give back the seven mil that they gave you as collateral, but then you also pay them for the essence. And then there you go. That's how you execute an essence trade without getting scammed. There you go. Also, I would suggest don't use items as collateral, just use coins. Like trading one item for another item opens up the door to even more swap scams. For example, let's say, oh, this a uh, zombie knight chest plate that's legendary is worth about seven mil let me use that as collateral no they could swap it for an epic one that's been recommed and then you get scammed just and then they might give you a different version of the same item maybe it doesn't have hot potato books anymore maybe it has less enchantments just use use coins for collateral all right collateral scams are everywhere be very very careful and it's really all it is is just use coins as collateral and have the exact amount of coins as the collateral and then you won't have problems okay so now that i've explained item swapping scams and collateral scams here's some applications for these scams for the people trying to steal coins from you people can either swap the item on trade back or refuse to give the item back if there's no collateral or the incorrect amount of collateral or they could just swap the item if you're not paying close enough attention and that is with essence scams reforged stone scams crafting recipe scams leveling tarantula rev final destination armor kills it all works the exact same way for example right i already talked about essence let's talk about reforged stones let's say same scenario livid dagger and then i have a withered blood so withered blood right so i want to put withered reforge on my livid dagger so now the items i'm giving the guy is worth 7 mil plus 2.5 mil so it's roughly you know 9.5 million coins so then they give you 9.5 million coins as collateral during the trade so you get 9.5 million coins they get your items so if either party decides that they don't want to conduct the second half of the trade they can sell the items and get the same amount of coins back but yeah let's say that they're in good faith they go over they reforge your item they come back and then you just have to pay them the reforge cost and uh give them back their coins and then there you go and then just don't get swap scammed and then you've got a reforge without getting scammed uh, <clears throat> leveling pets works about the same way i would suggest if you're going to pay for someone to level your pet um it's kind of difficult to calculate how much a pet level is worth so like go for whatever the value of the lowest bin is and then like i don't know it's much tougher to do collateral for pets like if i pay someone to level i don't know a baby yeti that's probably a very common one that people get leveled because they don't like fishing lowest spins 20 mil so like they give you 20 million coins as collateral i don't know maybe it'd be best just to buy it straight from the ah and then have the collateral be whatever you paid for it assuming you got an average deal and then once they give you back the pet you pay them an agreed upon amount of coins per amount of xp and then you give them back their collateral and same with crafting recipes 
they give you the coins for the materials as collateral. Yeah, makes sense. So now we're going to get into the scariest category. This is what I consider the most risky scams. These are the ones where there really isn't much you can do. You have to find people that you trust at this point because it's very, very easy for someone to bamboozle you with these type of scams. So I would say one of the most risky scams in the game right now is anything to do with Anita. So mathematical hose, basket of seeds. Um, I don't know if you wanted to, a hoe of greater tilling or whatever. Items that can't be traded or sold have to be dropped on the floor. And you can't get these items unless you get gold tickets, which as you know, it's difficult to get gold tickets because you need to have decent enough farming gear to surpass most of the people. So anyway, it's a very, very, very common situation where someone wants to buy, for example, a mathematical hoe blueprint when they can't get a gold medal. Like I said, you, you have to drop it on the floor and then once you pick up the item, you give the person their coins. Now that opens the door to scamming. Now, this is the most risky scam because you can't drop an item on the floor and trade back coins at the exact same time. It just doesn't work that way. And if you were to say, have an item of equal value to the mathematical whole blueprint, they could item swap it. Like they can drop, like as soon as you drop the item, that item's not yours anymore. <laughs> so it's extremely risky to even deal in this way. The only thing you really can do to save yourself is to have a trustable middleman from a trusted discord. But honestly, I'm a very distrustful person and I don't even know if I trust somebody from a discord because again, I don't know them. I mean, sure, if they're on like, uh, it, it's tough. It's really tough. I mean, the best thing you can do is find a middleman that both of you trust that is not in any way related to the other guy because that could just be a friend trying to scam you. But just do the farming things, man. I, again, I made a tutorial. It's in the cards. Just get the medals yourself. Don't open yourself up to scamming. It's a major risk either way. There's nothing you can do. Not. It's very, very, very easy to get scammed trading in hoes. The other one is dungeon and slayer carries. So the problem with dungeons is that if you pay for someone to, for example, carry you so you can get a floor seven completion so you can use Necron armor, the problem with that is they could let's say it works in such a way that you pay them first then they do the carry you pay them they decide they don't want to carry you then you're scammed you can't get your coins back let's say that they ask for a payment after so you get your floor seven carry you have the completion and then you leave the party and ignore add them all before you can pay them scammed it's a two process trade it's a dual process trade there is no way to guarantee that both parties are happy same thing with slayer there's nothing you can really do not to get scammed in this way other than having a trustable guild but there's no way to know that they're trustable so again just progress normally and that's coming from me who's technically been carried so many times so i can't really talk but if you want to not get scammed don't get carried <laughs> it's tough i don't know what else you can do here man there's no, there's no solution now the last one is probably the scariest of all of the issues with skyblock trading right now and apparently there exists a type of ghost item that is not just a display item from the bazaar. It is a perfect replica of an item that someone's holding in your hand. Apparently the way it works is you open the player visit menu. I'm not gonna actually do it because I don't have a hack client. Let's say <laughs> I copy this man's, oh, his item keeps changing. Let's say I copy his pet. Let's say I could take his pet you can use a hack client or something. I don't know how it works. It has something to do with auto clicking. You can apparently get a fake item in your inventory that you can manipulate, like change the item slot, put it in trade menus, whatever. And the item disappears when you change lobbies, but it could be used in trades and people could potentially abuse that to give you a fake version of an item. It's, it's honestly scary because there's literally nothing you can do. It looks exactly like the item you want. Like the lowest bin thing in the mod will show what the lowest bin is. It, for all extensive purposes, is the item. But then as soon as you trade, or as soon as you uh, change lobbies, the item disappears because it's technically duped. So the only way I can really think of to prevent this from happening is to party up the person you're trading with, have nothing in your hand, and then just keep on joining private hubs. Because like I said, the items disappear when you change lobbies. So let's see, you go to the hub selector. If you have a rank, there you go. There's only one person in this lobby. They're nowhere near spawn. So there you go. You just end up in the same party 
are in the same lobby as the person you partied, don't have anything in your hand that they can copy and make a fake item out of. So there you go. Then uh, once they change lobbies, the item disappears, so they can't scam you with it. So that applies to almost all trades. <laughs> Apparently it's patched at the moment, but you can't be too careful. Something could, you know, have it happen again. I wouldn't, I don't know. Before the video ends, again, if you'd like to pick up the 30 virus hacked bad line cloak, you can get it in the pinned comment description. It looks so freaking neat. It's my favorite cloak to date, honestly. I don't think, I don't think I'm going to be able to top this one if I'm going to be honest with you, chat. But anyways, I guess that's it for the tutorial. So uh, leave a like down below if you enjoyed. And hopefully, uh, good luck out there. Don't get scammed. Anyways, bye. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys later.